Hi, this is Mandy and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be making a sheet pan meal, a copycat Taco Bell recipe, and a frugal recipe. So if you're interested, stick around. I'd love for you to hang with us. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell. This is all things Mandy. For tonight's meal, we're gonna be making a sheet pan meal. So what I've done is I have lined my sheet pan here with some aluminum foil. Just makes cleanup a little easier. I'm just gonna spray that a little bit. And I'm gonna start by cutting up these little baby yellow and red potatoes that I got at Aldi. So I'm just going to cut those into in half. I think I'm just gonna do half and put those on my sheet pan. Now this one's pretty big, so I'll probably quarter it. These look yummy though. So I'm gonna cut up all my potatoes, get those on this sheet pan, and then I'll show you what happens next. So I've got all my potatoes cut up here, and y'all, I've got to tell you something. Yesterday I went and splurged a little bit, and I got me a really good knife. And let me just tell you, there is nothing to be ashamed about when you've got a good knife. It's sliced to those potatoes like butter. So I'm really excited. So I'm gonna take my potatoes here. I've got a little bit of oil. I'm gonna pour, pour on here. I was, I'm needing to go get some olive oil. I'm out because that's normally what I would use. But I'm gonna put some oil on that. And then I'm gonna take my little baster here and make sure all those potatoes got coated with that oil really good. You can just do this with your hands too if you wanted to, but I was trying to keep from having to wash my hands again right away. So I'm just gonna get that around and I'm going to just season those with some salt and pepper. And you know, potatoes could take a lot of salt. I'm gonna have to add more in a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so that is the potato part. And I have some chicken. So let's see what we're gonna do with the chicken. So I have two very large chicken breasts here. And I need to feed four tonight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into chicken strips just to cut this down a little bit. So, you know, little pieces like that. I'm gonna lay that on my sheet pan there. Now, I'm really excited about this recipe. It's a new recipe that I found on Pinterest and it is called Everything But The Bagel Sheet Pan Meal. So, um, I love using that season, everything but the bagel. So I'm gonna put these pieces or strips of chicken on here, get that arranged, and cut up my next chicken breast. And then I'll show you how we season it. I did decide, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of this already minced garlic onto these potatoes. So I'm just gonna do a little Wort of this minced garlic. Get that mixed around. And I'm gonna add some oil to my chicken. Pour a little bit on there. And I'm gonna take my brush again, just brush that on, make sure it's all coated because this is gonna make that seasoning stick really well. All right, so I'm gonna take salt. pepper and then this everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's and sprinkle that all over the chicken and then when I flip the chicken I'll add more seasoning to the opposite side so I'm gonna add asparagus to this as well, but asparagus doesn't take long at all. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this in 
an oven 425 degrees for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna flip my chicken and add my asparagus so stay tuned all right so I'm just getting ready to take that out of the oven but all right so I'm getting ready to take that out of the oven and flip my chicken but I'm gonna get my asparagus ready so I'll rinse this and now I'm just gonna cut these woody stems off just like that and I'm gonna add this to my sheet pan and then I'm going to season those as well. All right, so here's my chicken. I'm going to start by just kind of giving these potatoes a little wishy wish. Give them a little stir. Yeah, they're coming along great. So I'm just gonna kind of push those over to the side as they continue cooking. And then I'm gonna give my chicken a flip. So I'm gonna flip each of these chicken strips. Once I flip them, I'm going to season the other side and add my asparagus and put this back in the oven. So, see how this goes. We don't have a Trader Joe's in my area, but I ordered this off of Amazon. Um, this, this everything but the bagel. I've added it on a couple recipes and it's just really good. I like how it has all of the seasons in it. So I'm going to pretty liberally coat this side, add a little bit more salt and pepper, and then I'm going to add my asparagus here to the center. I'm going to do like this, Let's see if I can give it a little smudge. One thing about asparagus, I don't know if everybody's this way, but I like my asparagus to not be mushy. So that's why I'm adding it here at the end. And so I'm gonna put it right there in the middle. I'm gonna add some more oil. And then I'm gonna do salt and pepper for the asparagus. And that's how that's done. So I'm gonna put this back in the oven, 425. 15 more minutes and then I'll check and see if the potatoes and the chicken is done. So I just pulled my sheet pan out of the oven. Everything is nice and tender and cooked through. So I'm gonna let this rest for a little bit and then I'll show you what the plates look like. So this is our completed plate. We have two of the chicken strips with the everything but the bagel, our roasted asparagus and our roasted baby yellow and red potatoes. So that's dinner tonight and it is delicious. All right, so for tonight's meal, it's gonna be a copycat recipe and I'm gonna be honest, it's one of my favorites. I always loved Mexi melts from Taco Bell. And one day I went through the drive-thru and I tried to order a Mexi meal and they're like, we don't have those anymore. And I was shocked. So I'm gonna look at how to make remake copycat this um, Mexi melt from Taco Bell. And I'm gonna take you along with me. So this is what I'm starting with. I'm starting with one pound of ground beef. And I'm going to break that up and brown it up in a skillet. And then we'll see what happens next. All right, so on the side, I'm gonna use this cheesy Mexican rice. And so it says, two and a half cups of water, which I have measured here. So I'll pour that in the pot. And it says a tablespoon of butter. So let me add that. Here's a tablespoon of butter. And then it says, season and mix and uncooked rice. All right. So here is our seasoning mix. Here is our rice. So I'm going to add the rice. Okay. And I'm going to add the seasoning mix. Okay. And then it says stir uncooked rice is gonna mix some water and butter in a two quart saucepan so i'm going to take this and stir it 
heat to boiling, stirring frequently. Reduce heat and cover. All right, so that's what we're doing here. So I'm gonna bring that to a boil. And I'll put my butter away. And I'm gonna check on, but my fridge won't close. I'm gonna check on my meat here. I've got one pound of ground beef brown up. So I'm gonna break that up. I can't wait to eat these next meals. I that was my favorite Taco Bell item when I was young. And I'm just really sad that they discontinued the item. So so I'm excited to see how this turns out. Oops. I'm just going to break up this ground beef and get ready to season it. I'm just basically doing like what I would do if I was doing tacos. And hey, it's Tuesday, so this could be like a Taco Tuesday, for real. So I'm just going to season this meat, brown it up, just like I would do if I was doing tacos. So that's where I'm at right now. So. Hmm. I can't wait. I love Mexican food. It's my absolute favorite. So stay tuned. Once the rice package came to a boil, I've got that stirred and I've got it cut down to low and I'm gonna let that kind of simmer. I'll let that rice come up. And then now I have drained my meat. I've added Two thirds of a cup of liquid water and my homemade taco seasoning. And if you are interested in seeing how I make my homemade taco seasoning, leave me a comment down below and I will totally post that video. Um, I just leave, use the spices I have on hand and make my own taco seasoning and that way it cuts back on the sodium. So I'm gonna let that hang out for a few minutes and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna assemble my Mexi Melt. All right, so this is how I'm going to assemble my Mexi Melt. I'm gonna take a taco size flour pool pan, just like this. And I'm gonna take my meat taco mixture and lay a little bit down the center, just like that. And then I'm going to take some cheese because that's important. I've got some cheddar cheese here. Got a little bit left that I want to use. So I'm going to add some cheddar cheese. Just a sprinkle. And then I've got some pepper jack, shredded pepper jack that I'm going to add. It'll add some great flavor. And then I'm going to add some pico de gallo. It's like salsa, but not blended down. So I'm gonna add some of that to it. Mmm, that looks so yummy. And then I'm just going to roll it, just like this. And then I'm going to put it in this temple. And that'll help the cheese melt, and then I'll help keep it warm for my family. It's ready to eat. So I'm gonna keep rolling these, and then we'll see how we plate it up. And so this is our dinner. This is copycat Taco Bell Mexi Melt. And then I did some Spanish rice and it's really good. So you should try it out. Hey guys, for this last meal of the week, I thought I would go with something really frugal because I know a lot of us right now are trying to pinch our budget just a little bit. So at Aldi's, I got this four pound bag of dried pinto beans for like $2. It was a crazy deal. So what I did is last night I took half of that four pound bag, so two pounds, and I rinsed the beans and I soaked them overnight in cold water. And so what I've done now is I've added my pinto beans to my crock pot and it's a big bunch of beans. I seasoned the beans with this season all seasoning salt and I wanted to use some minced onion but I didn't have any. 
and then I just poured a whole container of beef broth in and added more waters to get the beans covered. So I put this on high to get it started and then I'm going to let this cook all day and I'm gonna make some cornbread and chow chow, so stay tuned. All right, so my pintos have been cooking on high for a couple hours and so now I'm gonna work on my corn muffins and I'm gonna take the shortcut today and I'm gonna use this corn muffin mix. It was less than a dollar at your regular grocery store and even at Aldi. So I'm gonna add that per the directions to a third a cup of milk and one egg. So I'm gonna whisk this together, get it thoroughly combined. I just love cornbread with my pinto beans. And I'm gonna go ahead and spray my muffin tin and get that divvied out. So I've got that mixed and into my muffin pan. I tried to do each cup two thirds full. So this is a 12 muffin cup tin and I got 10 out of that. I'm gonna put this into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Okay, so my corn muffins are out and we are just waiting on those beans to be done. Okay, so just let me explain this chow chow situation. This I bought at the grocery store. It's a home style southern relish. And basically it's just cabbage, peppers, cucumbers, everything kind of pickled into a relish. Now, it's really good on pinto beans. I'm gonna show you how that is when I plate up my pinto beans. But I'll tell you, when I was a kid, my mom would make pinto beans and I would not eat them. And so what she ended up doing to get me to eat them was she would top them at first with ketchup and I ate them. And then we moved to mayonnaise which sounds gross but it is totally delicious so she would top my pinto beans with mayonnaise and i would eat them but i've seen people eat them with chow chow sour cream cheese so many things but today we're doing this southern chow chow so as you can see here is my completed dish you see my cornbread muffin the pinto beans with the chow chow on top this was really comforting and delicious. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.